Hi, this is Coach Sandy Nightpaver of SageRunning.com, and today we're going to talk about race day fueling. It's a big topic, there's a lot to cover, so I'm just going to jump in and get started right away. First thing to remember is you have to practice what you want to do during the race, whether it's a half marathon or a 100 mile plus ultra. It's good to get your body used to what you're going to fuel with. Now, if you have an ultra and you have a crew and drop bags, you might be able to use whatever products you want, or if you're even during a half marathon or a marathon, if you're comfortable carrying products with you, choose what you want and then use that during your faster long runs. And I'm specifying, specifying faster long runs here because during slower long runs, I think you can definitely get away with having less than you plan to on race day, or you might even want to do some fat burning long runs. Just sorry, I just mentioned carrying your own products. If you're not going to use your own products and you're, you know you're going to rely on what the race aid stations have, look those up ahead of time and then go to your local running store or order these products offline so your body is used to what they're having. I know a few athletes they have problems with Gatorade uh, and, and that's part of just because of the ingredient mix in it. And so if there's a marathon that uses Gatorade, what a lot of athletes I have do is they'll do every other cup will be water and Gatorade and that way their stomach tends to work th that a lot better. Um, but again, sorry, going back to those fast long runs, that's when you have to practice race day fueling. No excuses here. You have to be able to train your gut to handle what you want to do during the race. And so if you plan on having, let's say like a 100 calorie gel every 30 minutes, that's what you need to be doing during your, your long run. Or, or if you want to do the sip and nibble approach, um, where you just kind of like sip um, fluids and water, or sip fluids, and then um, maybe just take a little bit of a gel here and there, and still add up to like 203 calories, 200 to 300 calories per hour, do that. But again, like you have to have a plan set up well before the race date, so you can actually practice this during your long runs. It may take a couple of tries, so don't wait to the last key long run before the race to do this. Practice early on. Start getting your body used to it. You can train your gut. Studies have started showing that, but you know, you can't train your gut if you're not doing it. Um, and you know, I, I actually marked that out for athletes in their training plans on when I want them to start practicing race day fueling, and you should do that for yourself as well. Uh, I also mentioned 200 and 300 calories per hour. I say that specifically because Studies have shown that's what most people can handle during a race. Uh, yes, like if you're running slower during a race and you're just taking it easy, you might be able to handle more. And there are the exceptions of people who can handle quite a bit more than that. But especially uh, during all races, it's funny. I have I've seen athletes only take like maybe 100 and 200 calories during during runs and then all of a sudden during race day they're like oh I need all these ca calories and carbs to keep going and then at, and then they have stomach issues and then after the race you go over the plan and be like okay well how many calories did you have per hour and I found like the first hour or two they have 400 or 500 calories and of course your stomach's not ready for that again there is the exception during longer races where you're going slower and maybe your body can handle more um, or maybe like, you know, people are even like walking during, during hundreds or, or ultras. And yeah, then in that case, your body might be able to handle a lot more. But until you actually feel hungry, I would stick with that 200 to 300 calorie plan unless you know for sure you can do more. And then even the first hour of the race, your body has plenty of carb stores to go without calories that first hour. And so for a lot of people, just to play it safe, um, I'll suggest only doing maybe 100 to 150 calories that first hour to give your stomach a chance to get into the speed of the race. And another really important thing to remember about uh, digestion is when it's really hot out, your body is going to have more issues, maybe not more issues is the right word, but it is more difficult to start digesting foods uh, just because of the heat, your body wants to um, use all that energy to cool you off. And so there's just like not as good blood flow going to your stomach. And so during hotter races, please keep in mind, like if you can have solid food during long, long runs and training, you might not be able to get away with that during a hot race. And so you need to be really 
paying attention to how your body is feeling and how your stomach's responding. And going back to the sip and nibble approach when it's hot out, I always strongly, strongly suggest that. Another point I want to bring up is when you have your race day nutrition products, actually look what the products recommend to do, um, whether it's the timing of the products or what to take with it. An example of this is pretty much any gel. Gels are very highly concentrated and the majority of the or the gels are, are meant to be taken with some sort of fluid. Um, and so you really want to be careful with that because if you're just consuming this highly concentrated product, your stomach's probably not going to like it. But if you mix it up with some fluids right away, it's going to be uh, much easier for your stomach to handle and to get that energy um, going so you can actually use it. A really important thing I want to bring up is is hydration. Uh, if you're dehydrated, you're more likely to have uh, gut issues. And one, of, and one of the issues with dehydration, and you may have heard me say this before, is dehydration feels a lot like bonking. And so sometimes people be dehydrated, they're kind of like at their calorie intake per hour, but then they're like, oh, I'm bonking, and then start taking more, and then it just exas exasperates the, their gut issues. So. Be very careful about staying on top of on staying on top of hydration, and uh, it's also important to test out an electrolyte drink before your race. And I've seen uh, another big mistake I see is people have their electrolyte drink, and all of a sudden race day they start downing salt tabs, and they're getting way too much sodium, and they're just going to puke puke up all the fluids because their body can't can't handle it. And so that's a really big thing um, to consider too. I personally use Tailwind and it's all the electrolytes I need. Um, and I, I know if I took any more sodium besides that, I would not feel good. And so that's something you really wanna look into. Another thing I wanna bring up is fructose malabsorption. This doesn't apply to everybody. Some people are more likely to have this issue. Um, and a good way to tell is if, if you kind of like on your calorie per hour schedule during a race, then you get to aid station and you take a piece of watermelon or have a drink of, of pop or just another really sugary product. And even though it wasn't that many calories that you took in, you just start puking a little bit after the aid station. That might be something you want to look into. I don't want, I could, a fructose malabsorption, it's a whole other issue and I don't want to go too much into it for the sake of the length of this video, but if, if that kind of like set an alarm off in your head and like, oh, maybe I have that, please go look it up right after you finish watching this video. Another thing to be cautious of during the race is how much caffeine your products have. Now, if you normally have coffee or tea in the morning, um, I'm in full support of that, but then after that first cup or maybe two like you normally have with breakfast race morning, you need to be careful with how much you have right away during the race. Just because it can mess up with your, your digestive system again and you might find yourself going to the bathroom uh, pretty early on in the race or, or mid-race and we want to avoid that because especially if it's a shorter race or, or a marathon, like that trip to the bathroom might be costing you a PR. So, um, so yeah, be careful of your caffeine intake. I personally normally recommend my athletes to not take in a gel or a drink with caffeine until the halfway mark, maybe three-fourths of the way, depending on the length of the race. And so that's just something you might want to consider. And then I'd also just think about like, hey, you might not want to have two gels with a lot of caffeine in a row. Just again, you can play around with it during training, but it's just something to be cautious of during a race and know your body. And Speaking of knowing your body, one big thing is, is to kind of pay attention to how your stomach is feeling. I know this is obvious, or it seems obvious, but again, a lot of people start thinking they just have to force down food no matter what. And I do know a couple of people who can get away with that, but many people can't. If your stomach just starts to feeling a little bit off, give it a break. You know, if you if you fall off your hydration plan of like a gel every 30 minutes or so for for a little bit and maybe you have to go 45 to 45 minutes to even 16 minutes without a gel that's okay you know most people unless you have a serious health problem you have plenty of fat stores to carry you and you probably still have some you should have still have some carb stores left and so 
let your stomach settle and don't force food because if you start forcing food, it's a good chance you're to start puking it up and then of course that's what we wanna avoid. Another quick note is that you, during a race, when you're trying to really push yourself, I always go with really simple carbs like glucose because your body can digest those a lot easier. Um, there are instances where maybe more complex carbohydrates are okay, but if you're trying to go fast and push at a really hard effort, or it's really hot out, or maybe even if you're at altitude, go for the simple carbs. Be gentle on your stomach and just give it something you can easily digest. Now we're talking about race day nutrition here, but I do think it is important to look at the week leading up to the race because a lot of people, you have this idea of carbo loading before the race, but that theory of needing to carbo load is kind of, has started being dis disproven by studies. And the reason behind that is, because if you think about it during you know, the week leading up to a goal race, you're tapering. And so um, because you're not running as much, like your body just already to start like making sure your carb stores are full. And another thing is that as long as you're having a snack with carbohydrates in it after every single run, that's when your body really wants to st uh, store carbs or glucose. And so that's really like the main things you just need to consider race week. Like you don't need to start having all this extra food to make sure your, your carb or carb or glucose stores are full for the race. And speaking of carbo loading, you know, it's funny, I hear a lot of people a couple of days before the race, they want to have um, a bunch of pizza or even donuts because they're just thinking carbs, carbs, carbs. But the thing to remember about food like that, um, like pizza and donuts, is that if you're having your standard store-bought or, or restaurant-bought pizza or donuts, most of those calories are actually from fat. They're not from carbs. Unless like you're making your own like healthy pizza without oil or without cheese, then it's probably mostly carbs. But otherwise, it's mostly fat. And you know, those products, if you eat pretty healthy, uh, you might not actually feel very good after eating those products. You might feel a little bit sluggish. Uh, yeah, I'm sure if when you were in your 20s or teenager, you could get away with it. But now if you kind of, you're still doing your pizza routine the night before the race and you, you start noticing you don't wake up race morning feeling very good or, or you feel a little bit sluggish during the race, just consider what you're having the night before the race. I always suggest to have a meal you're used to and you have regularly and you practice before um, those fast long runs again. Um, and so yeah, going back to like those training fast long runs, like think about what you're having the night before and what you're gonna have on race day and what you're gonna have uh, as your pre-race breakfast. Like those are all things you wanna practice in training along with the, the timing of that. Uh, before a race, I always recommend to my athletes, assuming it's a fairly early start and it's not like an evening or middle of the afternoon start, is to have a really this isn't early for some people, it'd be early for me, is to have a fairly early dinner, maybe around five o'clock. And just to make sure, you know, your stomach is fully digesting that before the next morning. And same thing with breakfast, the day of the race. Uh, try to have something maybe like three hours before the start. Maybe you can get away with two hours. And then if you're like me and you typically like having a big breakfast, like for example, I normally have a big bowl of oatmeal in the morning and then I can run for probably like three hours without a problem and that's just what my stomach is used to. And I learned this the hard way is I can't have a big breakfast and then assume during a race I can start consuming calories right away. Like I started having stomach issues really early on a race once when I when I discovered that. And so um, for personally for me, race morning, I have to have a fairly light breakfast and I'll have my cup of coffee and I'll, I'll normally do it like two and a half to three hours before the, before I race start. And that has been pretty successful for me. And again, this is something I test out bef um, on runs during the week, or especially those fast long runs. So the key takeaway here is to practice, practice, practice before you actually get to the race. There's also this interesting idea out there that you should consume protein during a race, thinking that, you know, it your body can already start repairing itself or your body can use it as a fuel source. But those things 
aren't really true. If your body is using protein as a fuel source, there's a serious issue there. And it's actually very hard for your body to digest protein as you're in the midst of physical activity. And so if you get to an aid station and you're consuming all this protein, like just know like your stomach might not be able to digest it. Again, if you're going slower, it might be just fine, but that's just one more thing I, you should consider when going into a race. And you know, just to restate this, because I, I think it's important, and I don't know if I said it accurate or extensively enough before, is for those of you doing ultras, stick to your plan and don't start consuming extra calories so you're hungry or, or anything out of the ordinary until you're actually hungry. And something I see, or I have seen quite a bit, is where somebody will stick to their race plan for for a couple hours and then they're like, okay, I still have a long way to go. It's a hundred mile or something. And then they see like a, a burrito or a quesadilla or, or waffles or something crazy in an aid station. And they have that pretty much all at once and then their stomach doesn't feel good for hours. Eventually they it might be able to go away, but um, it could take a long time to recover from that, or especially if it's hot out. Again, your stomach's gonna have more trouble digesting or even altitude to people find it harder to eat. So please have your plan and stick to it unless you actually feel hungry or you're getting a very strong sense that you actually do need something more. I know that was a lot to take in. I think that's all I meant to cover right now, although I'm sure people have more questions. And if, if you do have another question, please leave a comment on either my Instagram under this video, which is at sandynightpaper.com or, or underneath the Sage Running Instagram account, which is I believe just at Sage Running. And that's where I'm most likely to be or be seeing your comments and being able to answer your questions. Uh, with that said, I really hope you like this video and you have a happy stomach during future races. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep running wild.